In this video, I'm gonna unbox this Makita 18 volt cordless jigsaw and show you its features. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a jig to cut a perfect circle using this Makita cordless jigsaw. Welcome back to the wood shop. My name's Brett. This cordless jigsaw is the newest tool in my shop. I bought it to cut the circles for my rotating cornhole boards. More on that in another video. But before we get to the unboxing, let me take you on a little trip to the store to show you how I selected this make and model. I already have a corded jigsaw, but I wanted a cordless jigsaw because it was gonna be cutting circles and the cord kind of gets in the way of that. Originally, I was looking at the rigid brushless cordless jigsaw because I already have a few of the rigid 18 volt batteries and a charger. And I also liked that the rigid had a built-in dust collection port. But when I got to the store, they didn't have any of the rigid in stock. And I was anxious to get going on building these rotating cornhole boards because I was trying to get a set done by Labor Day at the cabin. So now I had a decision to make. Which brand of jigsaw will I be going home with? As you can see, there are several brands to choose from. And uh, the deciding factor for me was which 18 volt batteries do I already own? I didn't want to invest in yet another set of batteries and its charger because they're expensive. And I have a small shop with limited storage. Actually, any one of these brands probably would have worked. I like Milwaukee, and not just because I live in Wisconsin, but because they're quality tool makers. But they are a bit more expensive than some of the other brands, so that's why I went with the Makita. And here's my pro tip for you, especially for you guys that are just starting to build up your tool supply. Each brand of tool has its own battery charger and they're not interchangeable. In other words, you can't charge a DeWalt battery on a Milwaukee battery charger and you can't charge a Makita battery on a Metabo charger, etc. So my suggestion is to do a little research and try to figure out which tool line is going to work for you and then only buy that brand. And that way the batteries, which are expensive, will fit every tool you have and you only need one charger. See, I've already got the rigid double charger, the Master Force, which is Menard's store brand, uh, the Makita, the Milwaukee, which actually I just noticed has the 18 volt and the 12 volt in one charger. Then I have the Metabo for my pin nailer, not to mention my 12 volt over here for my Bosch drill driver. So here we are, this is the Makita XVJ03Z, the 18 volt cordless jigsaw tool only. The LXT refers to the 18 volt lithium ion battery system that Makita has. So let's see what comes in the box. Oh, and I feel I need to mention this is not your typical unboxing video. This tool isn't actually brand new. I've already used it a few times because I didn't have time to stop my work and make this review video. So this is actually a reenactment of the original unboxing, if you'll indulge me. So here we go. I'm going to pretend to open it up <laughs> for the first time. And a lot of uh, unboxing videos gloss right past this paperwork stuff, but I think this is worth a mention. Look at this uh, poster that Makita gives you. Makita boasts the world's largest cordless tool lineup powered by 18 volt lithium ion battery. 270 plus tools that all fit this one battery. So that's pretty impressive. Registration. Owner's manual comes with six blades. And as you can see, <laughs> I've already smoked one and I broke the other one that was this size, but um, two of each type. So this one being a more aggressive tooth that cuts on the upstroke um, for ripping through material pretty quickly. I busted one of these already um, and smoked this one, cutting a bigger hole in our kitchen cabinet for a, a new double oven that I just installed this past weekend. And then, it's just not that easy to get out of here. Come on. You can do it! Good grief. Get out of there. Okay. 
These are super fine, fine tiny teeth, and this is for cutting metal. And of course the tool. This is tool only, does not come with a battery or charger. That box would be bigger and it would have been a higher price tag. So and the rest of this is just cardboard. And the first thing when you pick it up, you'll notice it's kind of heavy. Um, it's well balanced. It's, you know, balances on my trigger finger and it's super stable on the surface. And I like this top handle or D handle. Uh, the other jigsaw I have is a barrel grip, uh, kind of like that. And I think I like this D handle better. Up on top here, we got a trigger lock. It locks out the trigger to prevent accidental startup. And a variable speed trigger from zero to 2600 strokes per minute. This is not the brushless. The brushless would have a speed control over here that goes from 800 to I believe 3600 strokes per minute. So this is just a variable speed trigger, a little bit slower than the brushless. The brushless also would be a little bit longer in the body. And another difference is the brushless has the, the blades insert right into the opening just by pressing it in. It doesn't have the toolless lock system like this one has. The brushless also has a soft start feature that um, it starts off a little bit slower and then once you make contact with the wood then it engages and kicks up into speed. And some of the other features of this one, it has a plastic base plate cover um, to protect finer surfaces like laminates, stuff like that. So, and that's easily removable, just holds on by friction. Don't know how much I'll be using that, but we'll see. And then it's got this clear splinter guard here it also just holds in by friction. That feels like it will fall out or get in the way sometimes. So I'm not sure how often I'll use that either. Um, but it's there for finer work, I guess. And then on the back here, there's an Allen key storage. And that is used to adjust the base plate in this cap screw right here. Just put the Allen key in, give it a turn, and then that loosens up the base plate so you can adjust it forward or back if you need to. And you can also tilt to make bevel cuts. So you can get pretty crazy with the bevel on this. It has um, preset indents on the bottom there. But, Pretty sure I'm mostly gonna be cutting in the 90 degree position. So we'll lock that back down. And stow the key. And like most modern jigsaws, this accepts a T shank. Looks like a T. This has a toolless blade lock. So you just swing that open and pop it in there and then release that and then it's in. And I'll show you a different angle there. Open, see down in the middle there, it opens up the mouth to receive the blade. Pop the blade in there. Make sure you're matched up with the rolling guide here teeth forward, of course, and just let that blade lock come back. Um, it will actually accept it in backwards, <laughs> um, and it'll, it'll lock in there, but you'll probably pretty quickly figure out that that's wrong, hopefully before you destroy your blade and maybe your tool. It won't cut very well in that position, but it is possible to put it in wrong, so make sure you're putting teeth forward because it cuts in that direction. Then we'll pop the battery in. And away we go. 
Got a nice LED light right in front of the blade. Comes on when you hit the trigger. And... You hear the dog barking? That is annoying. And this dial here is a oscillating feature going from no oscillating to maximum. It's got one, two, three different positions in addition to straight. And what that'll do is uh, move the guide back and forth and make the blade go in an oscillating pattern rather than just straight up and down. And so the way you would use that is um, <clears throat> straight up and down would be for finer cuts where you want a, the finest finish that you can get. And if you go maximum oscillating, that, like I said, it's gonna move that, watch there. It's gonna move it back and forward, moves it back and forth. And you would use that if it'll help you clear out wood chips faster to make a faster cut if you're not as worried about a fine finish. So you got those options. And the LXT 18 volt lithium ion battery boasts a 30 minute charge time, which is actually pretty quick. Giving you more work time, less charge time. So it's got that going for it. All right, let's put this thing to work. I'm going to show you how to make a circle cutting jig to cut perfect circles. I begin by measuring out the center point. As you saw earlier, this is for a cornhole board where the target hole rotates on a motor that's mounted underneath. So I'm actually measuring the center for two holes, the target hole and the 20 inch circle around the target hole. I use a center punch to make an indent where the center lines meet, and I want to see the circle as I cut, so I'm using this super sophisticated compass to mark out the circumference. Normally you would drill a hole slightly larger than the jigsaw blade to get started, but I only want this cut to be just the kerf of the blade. So you could use an oscillating tool with a fine tip, or a dremel tool, or a drill with a skinny drill bit and make several holes, which is what I'm doing here. I was going to show you more of this drilling process, but that was boring. Get it? Boring. This is a very simple jig for cutting perfect circles with a jigsaw. I'm starting out with a board that is about 18 inches long and 4 inches wide, and I'm attaching to one end some scrap pieces. The size of these isn't that important, just make sure that they're straight and square. I made the two side pieces the length of the jigsaw base. I've removed the blade from my Makita jigsaw, put it into my jig lined up with the side piece that is already attached, and place a second piece so that the jigsaw is snug. And then I will glue and pin that second piece in place. Now we want to put our jigsaw blade back in and make a cut up until the backstop. So now with our jig made, we can go ahead and cut out our circle. You can use this jig to cut any size circle. Since we're looking for a 20 inch circle, we're going to be placing a screw into the jig 10 inches away from the blade. I like to get the screw started, that way I can actually see it and then line it up with the mark that I made earlier. This is actually pretty important to get the circle centered on the board. The jig will keep it perfectly straight, just make sure to keep all your pressure down and forward. If your jig is long enough, the screw in the center will actually keep the circle from falling in once it's cut. Mine wasn't quite long enough, so I grabbed the target hole before finishing the cut. Otherwise, there's a risk of bending the blade and messing up the cut. There we go, a perfect circle. And then we'll do some light sanding. Now, am I saying that this Makita cordless jigsaw is the one you should go out and get? By no means. You do what's right for you, in your shop, in your budget. 
I will say, I like this Makita Jigsaw. I don't have a lot to compare it to, but I'm happy with it. I did notice after I bought this that Amazon has the same Jigsaw for $50 cheaper than the price I paid at Home Depot. I provided a link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and give it a thumbs up if you thought this was helpful. Thanks for watching.